Hey, it's Jared with State of Tech. Today we're gonna to talk about the iPad mini and how it's used in aviation. The new iPad mini is uh, definitely something that people use in aviation. It is a very popular tool. And so this video is gonna talk about whether or not this new device is worth the upgrade. Uh, people in aviation have been waiting for this for a long time. The iPad mini has a very long shelf life. It takes uh, Apple a long time to renew the iPad mini and they heard the cries of the aviation community as well as anybody else who, who just really loves the iPad mini form factor and finally did an upgrade. So I'm standing in the studio of Angle of Attack. I'm up here in Homer, Alaska. I've been flying with Chris Palmer who runs that channel and also has a flight school up here in Homer. He's a friend of mine and I am a student pilot. And so I thought it would be a perfect opportunity to talk about the iPad mini. We've taken the iPad mini up flying. We've put it through its paces and have a little bit to report. So first we're gonna talk about some of the specs on this device. Obviously some things have been upgraded. It has the more modern look that we've been used to and uh, some additional features. So I'm gonna look through those and we're gonna talk about them. The larger 8.3 inch display is great. The overall footprint of the iPad mini increased a little bit, but we got a lot more screen real estate because we no longer have the fingerprint reader down at the bottom. The fingerprint reader is now at the top. And uh, in talking about that, you know, it's taken a little bit of getting used to for me to have a fingerprint reader up there on the top. The iPad mini does not have face ID. It has a fingerprint reader, which is great because in a lot of instances, you're utilizing a device like this from an angle that's not gonna be easy for you to unlock it with face ID. This is something that Chris and I were talking a lot about is that while face ID would be great, it would be a little bit challenging to use when you're in an airplane. And so a fingerprint reader is a great option. Of course, personally, I would like both uh, so that I can choose between the two, but one is what you get here on the iPad mini. So 8.3 inch display, we've got the fingerprint reader. What's unique is that it's on the top of the device when you're holding it, and you also have the volume controls over here. But one thing that's really cool is that when you rotate your device into landscape mode, you know, you've got the fingerprint reader up here, you've got the volume controls here, uh, and volume up and volume down operate correctly. But then when you flip the device over, you would think, okay, well now my volume switches are gonna be backwards. No, the device actually knows that you've rotated in that direction, and up is still up and down is still down. I thought that was a really nice thing for Apple to add in because in tablets that I've used in the past, mostly Android tablets, that's been kind of a frustration. The brightness of the display hasn't really changed. We still get that 500 nits of brightness. However, it is pretty sufficient in most circumstances when you're up in the air. Of course, direct sunlight is still kind of an issue. It doesn't have enough brightness to overpower that. If you do need uh, more power in the brightness, you're definitely gonna have to go with something like an iPad Pro, which gets you up to a thousand but it's obviously a much larger device. Apple put the A15 Bionic chip in the iPad mini, which gives it a lot more power. That's what we need for ForeFlight with a lot of the new features that have come out, especially in the last year with ForeFlight, like synthetic vision and just uh, being able to split screen. Of course, there's the profile view that just came out the other day. These are all things that are gonna require much more horsepower, and the A15 Bionic is gonna deliver on that. On top of that is battery life and the power management of the device. Uh, a lot of uh, older airplanes, they don't have any option for external power. Maybe you don't have the cigarette lighter that can be adapted to power your device. So you want the best power that you can get out of your iPad mini as possible. And the A15 Bionic and even the smaller device, not having to power or push as large of a display definitely helps get you that better battery life performance. Now things that we're missing on this particular iPad is a headphone jack. We do have USB-C, which is great. USB-C now completes the almost the whole uh, iPad line. Of course, the old iPad that they still update is still on Lightning, but majority of the iPads are now on USB-C. With the USB-C being on the iPad mini, that means you can attach external storage devices to the device as well uh, as utilizing those hubs that let you not only charge your device, but connect additional devices to your iPad 
if you need additional storage beyond the 64 or the 256 that the device comes with, you can plug an external hard drive into it. I've done a video on this topic before, and it's great because a lot of times we are doing screen recordings, we're creating content with our iPads, um, we're loading content onto our iPads, and when we run out of storage space, because you can't get an iPad mini with 512 gigs or even a full terabyte, you may need to rely on some of that external storage. The USB-C connection makes that possible. It makes it much easier to charge because the USB-C is gonna charge a lot of our other devices. And so now we don't have to carry around a extra lightning cable for our iPad mini. We can use USB-C for that. Probably one of the biggest updates to the iPad mini is Apple Pencil 2 support. The Apple Pencil 2 support allows you to, uh, of course, annotate, do pretty much anything that you would want to do in the iPad mini that you were able to do on the bigger iPads like the iPad Pro. The benefit here is, of course, the wireless charging of the Apple Pencil. Being able to just slide that right in and dock it means that we don't need to charge our Apple Pencil with some sort of, uh, of cable. That was a frustration if you're in the air and your pen dies, you plug it in, you're gonna need yet another thing that you have to worry about charging. So just like any other iPad, just putting the pencil right up against the iPad is gonna charge it, meaning that you don't have to have yet another cable for that. Of course, the improved latency and everything that the Apple Pencil 2 brought uh, is a much better experience on the iPad mini than previous Apple Pencil. So of course, Apple also updated the iPad mini with additional cellular options. It supports 5G now. We've got improved antennas, which means better better range so when you're flying uh, you know close to cell towers or anywhere where you're still going to be able to get cellular data you're going to be able to get that um, at an extended range in this iPad mini that you would on the previous iPad mini. Apple has gotten better at extending the distance the range on the iPads over the years and they brought that to the iPad mini. On top of that, you get Wi-Fi 6 support, which may not necessarily matter when you're up in the sky, but when you're down on the ground, you're gonna get those better transfer speeds. We're getting improved cameras on the iPad mini as well with 12 megapixels on the front and the back. So if you're taking pictures or you just need another device with a camera, the iPad mini has better cameras than it did in the past. So let's talk a little bit about the performance of the device in air. Now, the reason that the iPad mini is the best device for aviators is because of its size. Now, you can panel mount uh, as Chris has an iPad Pro, which is a fantastic experience, especially for uh, him instructing students, having a big enough display for him to not only utilize the iPad, but also to uh, for his student that's sitting next to him to be able to see what's going on and learn how to use apps like ForeFlight. But the iPad mini is a great size for personal use. Of course, whether you're mounting it to a knee board or within your yoke, or maybe even some sort of an articulate arm up out of the way. The iPad mini is big enough so that you can see everything on the screen. It's a nice size display, but it's not so large that it gets in the way. Uh, in instances where you're able to in insert it into your panel or make it part of your cluster, that is going to be a great experience. But most of us like me that are still students or are flying airplanes that we're either renting or maybe you're part of a club, you're going to need something that you can take out with you. And the iPad mini is the perfect size for that. So we did a little bit of flying around and uh, you know I'm pretty impressed with the iPad mini, the new version. Uh, this has been my go-to device that I carry around with me. I like the iPad. I like having the Apple Pencil and a little bit larger of a screen than maybe a phone, but I don't always like carrying a large iPad. Like I have a 12.9 inch iPad, which is great for editing photos, for doing a lot of other things, but it's not necessarily a great option in the cockpit unless you have the ability to to, to mount it uh, like Chris has, which is a fantastic use case of a larger iPad. So the iPad mini, I think, is very much worth it. They've kept the price relatively decent. It's still, uh, you know, it's still expensive, but it is an excellent tool for aviators. And I think if you're wondering, do I get an iPad now? Do I make the jump in now? Yes, it's a fantastic time to do that because you know that the iPad mini is going to be, this version of the iPad mini is going to be around for a while. So 
being at the beginning of the product cycle, it's a great time to buy it. If you have an existing iPad mini, the last edition, and you've only had it for a year or two, maybe you're not really experiencing any issues and there's no sense in upgrading. But if any of the things that I mentioned earlier on in the video are things that you do want, then maybe it is a good time to update. With all of these new updates coming to ForeFlight, they're doing their best to optimize it and keep it performing on iPads that most people own. But with time, we're gonna need to upgrade and get a little bit more performance. So I hope that this video was helpful and showed you a little bit, uh, maybe if you're into aviation, it helped you decide whether an iPad mini upgrade is appropriate for you. Or if you're just watching because you find all of this stuff interesting, I hope that you enjoyed it. Regardless, give us a thumbs up, click on that subscribe button, and we'll see you back in another video soon. Take care.